first day of the season, I actually have to wear gloves? Unbelievable. Oh boy, here I am ranting again. So, welcome back to another edition of the Wandering Yuki Cheese Cafe, where there's actually a surprisingly little amount of legit cheese that featured on this show. I need to get that corrected one of these days. So, I just figured I'd uh, use today to highlight the coffee table that I've been working on for so long. All the caps are all glued on, and earlier today I was actually trying to hunt down for some epoxy at the mall. It's a surprisingly a hard thing to come by, and it looks like I'm going to have to go to one of the art supply store to get them, where it's actually not, <laughs> it's actually not a cheap thing to get. Sometimes you could get it in industrial quantities. Like, I could get a large amount that covers about 320 square feet for around $1,000. That's a really insane amount when you really think about it. I suppose I could just do the measurement and then bite the bullet. Because, I mean, when you have hobbies like this, when you're into art, it always comes with a price. So moving along to other things. At first I wasn't going to be doing any cooking today because I thought I've already done my fair share. But then I realized I was having an itch for some potatoes. Like I felt like I needed to get some potato wedge rations ready. And with the amount that I had, I thought I could do a little showcase for another basic recipe. But first... I need to get some fuel in, and I wanted to brew myself. So if you know my taste in the beers, you'll normally see them into mostly blondes that could sometimes be divided into like lagers, pilsners, blondes, or sometimes even pale ales. And I'm sure there's differences to them technically, but I'm not getting into that. But I mean, there's blondes and the IPs that I love, but one that I don't usually go for is uh, the stout beers. Sometimes from my experience, if you have too much of the stouts, I find them so heavy, it's like drinking that is like eating a giant ass steak in a restaurant. But on occasion, I do like to indulge. For my taste and purposes, Guinness is the gold standard. It's light, goes down really smooth. Some of the other stouts you're gonna find are gonna have maybe a coffee and or a chocolate taste to it too. First, I was like wondering, compared to other beers, what exactly makes them different? Well, it turns out they use dark malts or like dark barleys or sometimes even oatmeal or to ferment as a beer. The darker malt is what gives it the dark taste. So the one I wanted to do today is called O'Hara Stout, which has a bit of an espresso taste to it and I'm sure it's going to have a heavy coffee flavor. This one I picked up at the SAQ. And apparently that's one of the only places you could get them over here in Quebec. But I wanted to indulge this because I think the only time I ever had that was having it on tap at Hurley's uh, Irish Pub downtown. So I was kind of thinking subconsciously, I miss that place and I want to pay tribute to them. So I figured, let's take advantage of that and have a nice uh, stout. This one's also a 4.3% so it's a light one. And I look at the label, they have it in English, French, Spanish, Italian, whatever language. So you can kind of tell this thing is packaged for international deliveries. So nice dark stout to go with the flow. It's going to be uh, espresso-y, not uh, chocolatey or salty. Hmm. Funny. You would think that eventually someone would take that South Park song and make a beer out of that too. Oh, well, it gives me some background music to play while I'm pouring this. Happy Sunday, everyone. Say, everybody haven't seen my balls. They're big and salty and brown. If you ever need a quick, pick me up. Just stick my balls in your mouth. Ooh, suck on my chocolate salted balls. Stick them in your mouth. Yep, that is Chef from South Park. The guy who did the voice with Isaac Hayes, a legend in the soul and on Stax Records. So this guy's career went from singing the theme song from Chef to singing about chocolate salty balls. What a 180 degree turn. But I think you've had enough of that. Cheers. Time for the verdict. Oh yeah. I can really taste the coffee in here. Again, I wouldn't usually go for stouts, uh, but sometimes I like to make exceptions. So once I'm done with this, we're going to move on into the kitchen, start our potato rations. So now it's time to start cutting up our potatoes. So the main things you're going to need first are a good bowl full of potatoes, one cutting board, 
and a chef's knife to cut it properly. Yeah, I had an itch to make some uh, potatoes for myself because I like having my homemade fries. They're definitely a lot healthier when they're baked in the oven compared to when you get a fast food. And in particular, compared to that potato-related paste that you get at McDonald's. It's tasty because it's super salty, but it definitely cannot be good for you. Anyways, moving away from that, it's really simple over here. You want to make sure that you cut up your potatoes like maybe a good half an inch apart. Like this. And then after you're done, you would do another cut so that you get evenly cut uh, matchsticks over here. Some people would like to peel the skin off of this. Me personally, I prefer to keep it on. There's a lot more fiber in here and it's a lot healthier. There's the old saying, you know, puts hair on your chest. But I actually don't know if that's a... Uh, does that thing even work at all? Like, is that really a thing? Oh well. Can't win them all. So keep going with this and then eventually get them all in the bowl. Hmm. Maybe I should fast forward this. Because I always say that peeling potatoes is a boring job when you're in the army. But I imagine watching me cut potatoes is not that much more interesting. Stick around, everyone. Yeah, I need my fuel. All right. So I finally finished my prison sentence of peeling and uh, slicing potatoes up. So we're on to the next step. I like to get a nice big cookie sheet here to be able to bake it. And to reduce the mess, I like to add a little sheet of parchment paper over here. That way it's not going to stick too bad. And then most of the gunk that's going to build up when you're cooking is going to end up on here. So you just throw it out. It makes minimal cleanup. So the beauty of these potatoes is that it's actually simple. Like there's not too much work you need to do. The only mandatory ingredients you need are essentially just olive oil and salt. And then anything else is how you want to dress it up too. So I'm looking here, I think I want to say I have somewhere between three and five pounds of potatoes. So that would take like two or three tablespoons of olive oil, give or take depending on how uh, oily you want this stuff to cook. Here, one, deux, There you go. English, French, and Ukrainian all in one go. Triple threat, everyone. Beware. So that's three tablespoons of olive oil. And for this amount of fries, you probably just need like one teaspoon of salt. More or less. Because some people really like their salty uh, potato wedges. So I'm going to put a slight heaping teaspoon of that. Sprinkle it all around. And then the rest is all depending on your taste. Like I've used curry powder before to give it like uh, that kind of taste. I've used paprika just for coloring, chili powder to get the Creole flavor, even like basil, oregano, or fresh garlic. Fresh garlic is a bias because I'm Ukrainian. It's like garlic for Ukrainians is like oregano for Greeks. Those two are always uh, hand in hand. They have a symbiotic relationship. But I think today I'm going to use... One teaspoon of paprika to go with this. At most, this is just going to give it some red coloring when it's cooking. Uh, actually, I'm going to need like maybe two teaspoons. From my experience, paprika is not really a flavor. It's just something that gives it a bit of a reddish color when it's baked. Um, I think I'll do like one teaspoon of oregano so I can get that Greekness. And if you have any runoff, don't worry. A little bit more has uh, never killed anyone. Need some dry basil too. I'll do one teaspoon of that as well. And then I think I'm going to give it a bit of the Cajun flavor. I'm going to do one teaspoon of chili powder, give or take. Whoop, a little bit of runoff there. Ooh. Eh, no one's going to complain. Sometimes I enjoyed using chili powder in my spaghetti sauce as well, and it actually has a really, really good taste afterwards. So I'm not going to complain. So then once I'm done with all this, 
I'll take some gloves for maximum protection. And then just give it a nice mix to make sure it's all well coated. Especially you want to make sure all the pieces of potato are coated in oil. So that's, oh crap, I lost one. <clears throat> yeah, you want to have the, co the uh, potatoes all coated in oil just to make sure that they bake and brown properly as well. Not to mention to get all the seasoning mixed up together. I feel like you could also put ginger in this too. Ginger's apparently supposed to be really healthy for you. There. We're just about all uh, evened out here. And what you want to do with these fries is make sure they're more or less uniform instead of having one pile that's kind of flat and the other one is just piled up over here because you want this to uh, cook kind of evenly. There. And while we're waiting, the oven is preheating. Typically for these fries, you want it to preheat to about between 400 to about 450 degrees. I'm putting it for a 25 degrees Fahrenheit. This allows it to really penetrate properly. There's nothing worse than raw potatoes. I know I've been there before. Undercooked potatoes, it's too crunchy, and it's like, I'm not enjoying this as much anymore. So, yeah, 425 degrees, and then I'm going to put it in once it's uh, beeping, and you put that for around 45 minutes minimum, sometimes up to an hour, depending on how crispy you want it. So we'll get to that soon. Should be just about ready to go. That's a sign. So I'm going to take the potatoes and put them in. But what I also have done is just use my pepper grinder to get some uh, extra kick on here too. So lay that in the oven. And then I'm going to set my timer for, I'm going to say 50 minutes. And then we'll play the waiting game with that too. But in the meantime, I'm all out of fuel. So I think it's time for one more restock. So next one is going to be the New England IPA from La Gabriere. This one I've had before, and it's a surprising minor explosion. Surprisingly, it's a one that you can only get at the SAQ, despite the fact you could get it at any IGA around here. I don't know why, but you know, it gives me a good reason to go take a trip every now and then. So I got half beer, half foam. Ugh, I hate when gravity's against me. Wait, is it gravity at play here, or is it other uh, sinister forces? I mean, it is Halloween coming up, right? You know. I should stop before I dig myself further in the hole. The point is, I got IPA, and we're going to have some fries ready in about 15 minutes. See you around soon. Yeah, I realize that I'm wearing a hat for nothing, because I am indoors after all. So I took that off. I also put on a sweater because it is actually a little bit chilly in the house too. But uh, the beer is pretty good. Nice, hoppy, and fruity. Just the way I like my IPAs. But the main reason I'm doing this is because Felix, uh, my cat, would just want to show up and I thought I'd capture him. Had a little cat bomb for fun. Okay. I didn't show too much footage of me taking the potatoes out of the oven because, well, you know what that's like. But they came out really nice, crispy, and a really good red color thanks to the paprika and chili powder. So I'm going to give this a taste test to see what it's like. Mm. I'm telling you, it's the chili that's really getting to me. That's what gives it the extra kick. So to accompany that, I have some of the leftover sausages I grilled in another bun. And some spinach in the dressing to give myself a nice salad over here. Why spinach? Well, because it makes you strong like Popeye. You know, you'll be eating this, you'll have your uh, big guns, you'll be able to take on anybody in the world and just probably start singing, I'm Popeye the Sailor Man. I'm getting the cheese moment, aren't I? Okay, on that note, I think it's time to call it quits while I'm ahead. So this is Warner and Yuki signing off. Thanks for watching this latest edition of the Cheese Cafe. 
all of Lord lies on these new wooden panels over here. So once again, if you like what you see, hit the like, hit the subscribe button, send a comment, and above all else, always look on the bright side of life.